In the previous course in this series, I covered the basic concepts and terminology of audio and sound waves. This course will start looking at practical applications of mixing and processing that involve working with and manipulating sound waves. Ideally, you'll have a decent understanding of audio concepts and terminology, including things like amplitude, frequency, wave shape, harmonics and overtones, hertz and kilohertz, decibels, dBU and dBFS, and standard operating levels, and some familiarity with the various graphs and displays we utilize on a daily basis, like the waveform graph and the frequency response graph. Now, if any of those terms and concepts are totally unfamiliar, then you might want to take a run through that audio basics course first, not only to get a really solid understanding of the behavior of sound waves, but also to get comfortable with the necessary industry jargon and the most common graphs and displays you'll be using, both in this course and working with audio in general. If you feel you are already comfortable with those basics, then just go ahead and jump right in. You can always make use of the previous course as a reference, if need be, in case you come across some terms or concepts that need clarification. Now in this course, I'll be touching on several practical aspects of DAW use, how certain DAW components work, and the operation of the most fundamental effects. I'll go over basic mixing a little, level adjustments, gain staging, and the metering of audio signals. And I'll briefly cover panning, the positioning of tracks in the stereo sound field. But most of the focus will be on the two most fundamental types of signal processing, EQ and dynamics. EQ, of course, alters the wave shape, the balance of harmonics and overtones for tonal or timbral change. EQ is probably the most widely applied type of processing in both the recording and especially the mixing stages for both corrective and creative purposes. Dynamics includes compression and limiting, and expansion and gating. Compression provides automatic level adjustments. This is also done for both technical and creative reasons. Applied correctively, compression can take a track with constantly varying levels and provide a more consistent overall level, as well as maintain the proper balance against other tracks in a mix. It's also used for creative applications, like deliberately altering the envelopes of notes an effect that can enhance the punch or thickness of instruments, like drums, for example. Expansion and gating can remove unwanted background sound in a track, like headphone leakage. And specialty compressors and limiters are routinely applied nowadays in mastering, for better or worse. That's how they achieve those really loud levels of modern mixes. Now, this course is not designed to be a collection of individual little tips and tricks. You know, how to get this particular effect from that particular record that everybody likes. Instead, the goal here is for people to walk away with a solid enough understanding of how these processors work that they'll be able to dial up whatever sounds they want quickly and efficiently and without a lot of guesswork. This is the kind of processing where you can't rely on presets. Each time you use an EQ or a compressor, you're going to have to dial up the settings you need for that track in that song And the only way to get there is to really know how these tools operate inside and out. So on that note, let's get rolling.